inner monologues which are very meditative and quiet and, and, and calm. So all that is, of course, also to investigate that masculine force in them and break it and see what happens to them. But again, I would start with a question rather with an answer. To the question. Giving them all to her was an experiment. Yeah, a question at the back. That was so wonderful, thank you. Um, why did you both decide to make it linear? What was that process from making it a uh, kind of a... <laughs> we have had that question before. <laughs> no, I'm happy for it because I would ask myself the exact same question when I see this and know it was an art installation before. Yeah. And we're just laughing because we have had a few interviews today and some <laughs> questions come up again and again. Um, the, the reason is very technical, it was technical at the beginning, I needed to finance the installation. And that's very difficult, I'm moving in the art world, not in the film world normally. And so I got some people to support me, convincing them to support us generously. But they needed a linear version because they came from the movie world or the TV world. There was a Bavarian broadcast involved and a media board in Berlin Brandenburg. And the deal was like, I'm, I'm going to deliver something linear later, which I happily accepted because I wanted to do that art installation first. And then once we finished the installation, um, yeah, we had that problem to solve. And uh, on the other hand, it was always in the back of my head. And I thought like, it's also great because um, breaking with so many rules of filmmaking is kind of um, uh, uh, the, the attitude of a manifesto itself, like trying to break with this very narrow three formats in the film world and making that into, bringing that into a linear form and implanting it in this, like a virus almost in this, for instance, in a festival like this or later on in the movies, was for me an exciting thought. Although it was extremely, you can ask Bobby, the editor, it was very difficult to bring it into a linear form. So we needed, in order to, to, to avoid the, the boredom of you, because there's no story, we needed to invent a, a visual narration. And that was a tricky thing to do, but um, yeah. Credit design helped, the music helped, and, and a bit of um, magics. It, it worked, it was wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. We've got time for one more question. Yes, please, in the middle on the right hand side, just here. That was a bit lower down. Hello. First of all, I would like to say in German, vielen Dank für diesen tollen Film. Danke. That's it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to know from you, Kate, playing 12 roles, that's... 13. Uh, sorry, 13. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, how do you prepare for something like that? And which of them was your favorite one? Um, very quickly. I mean, it's, uh, it, to me, the, the process is always uh, collaborative, whether it's a, you know, a, a more traditionally structured film or whether you work in theater or, or whether you work purely in an art context. And uh, and Bina and and Massimo and and Morag, um, you know the hair, um, the, the the clothes and and makeup and and costumes. We we sat with Julian in a room for a day, and just said, okay, what will the silhouette be? What's the context? We put everything together, and then we just did it. Um, and the adrenaline was um, <laughs> and the fear was very deep. <laughs> but I like working that that, that way. Um, and also, I, I do, I don't know, I, I have this synapse in my brain that just sort of, I suppose the bigger the challenge, the more it just goes, it just switches off and I um, just go, oh well, can only fuck up and just <laughs> go forward. I think, you know, the, the bigger the risk, I think the bigger the reward, even if the, you know, the eventual thing doesn't, doesn't pay off, um, you know, it, so it was incredibly exciting to do, it was fast and furious and we often did several um, scenarios in the one day, but that's a huge testament to the crew and to, to, to Morag and Massimo who were putting a beard on and then suddenly, you know, as a newsreader and, you know, we were moving across Berlin. So it was a real, um, yeah, it was a real deep, deep time collaboration. Thank you. She's too modest because it needs a talent as well to deliver, deliver that and this, um, Never ending curiosity. That was what most blew me away when we worked together. That Kate would none of, 
even if we worked for 14 hours, she was not stopping to, uh, to ask questions to her character, to her role, and, and trying to memorize bits of it, and others came from an earplug, others came from a plate in the background, so it was all uh, a rush and uh, a trip in a way, and I think you can feel that fear of fearlessness <laughs> at once um, in the movie a little bit. But it was, I mean, it was very, um, because we had to make, you couldn't overthink things. You just had to say, well, this is the decision we're making right now. So, um, you know, but it was mostly about, um, I think the biggest challenge really, um, you know, apart from the speed with which we were working, was to decide, you know, the night before or often in the moment um, what the tone was, because often, you know, the, the, the character, the, you know, the, what she, he or she was saying didn't necessarily make logical sense. So I had to find tonal sense. And, you know, so much, you know, if, you don't, if you're not speaking the same language as someone, you can communicate, um, you know, on an emotional level, on a physical level. And so I sort of wanted to make sure that th that side of the communication was also alive. So the, the film is distributed by Neon Kim, and there will be a live event at the Tate on the 15th of November, and a region, uh, general release on the 24th of November. So spread the word. Thank you so much both for being with us tonight. Thank you very much.